Uh, Mr. Sisi, let me come to you first. You're from Italy. So tell us, please, against the current background in Italy and in Europe, what is the significance of uh, the president's visit this time? I think the significance is political, symbolic, that um, uh, we are in the middle of a political crisis in Italy and in Europe. And in these times, usually the president doesn't move. But uh, the fact that actually President Mattarella wanted in these dangerous times to come to China means that China is important for Italy and I would say also for Europe. So it's a political gesture of a long-term planning for Italy and for Europe as well. And I understand this is also his first visit uh, yes. to China since he became president. Uh, Mr. Wang, let me come to you. Um, why do you think the um, leader from Italy and the leader from uh, France uh, in China almost at the same time. We know the French Prime Minister Cazeneuve was here just a couple of days ago. Uh, was that a coincidence or is there a meaning behind such diplomatic arrangement? Actually, uh, Prime Minister of Finland also is coming. So <laughs> some more uh, European leaders gathered in Beijing. Uh, I think uh, Europeans pay more and more attention to China. Uh, not only economic trade, but also political, as I said. When the pre uh, President Trump took power, I think uh, globalization, multilateralism, global governance, big power corporations, all this questionable. Uh, and, and internally, as, uh, uh, the Netherlands and the France and Germany, they have their elections, many uncertainties. It's the most difficult time for the European integration. And China, I think, uh, among all the big powers, the most support of the European integration even more supported than some European countries like the UK. <laughs> <laughs> so I think the need, you know, for a multipolar world, I think they need each other. Mm -hmm. Now, Mr. Sishi, you said it, they need some very important messages, but what do you think they need from the part of China to bring back to Italy? Well, Italy now is in a very difficult situation. They would need, of course, economic cooperation. And ideally, uh, the one belt, one road would in ancient time at least ended in Italy mm -hmm. and in theory there are the possibility there is the possibility to invest in ports and harbors uh, that would revive the Mediterranean route and this would also be interesting for for China however because the political situation in Italy is extremely difficult perhaps economic and commercial cooperation at the moment is uh, maybe difficult but it's important that at least the president is laying the foundation for future uh, more concrete cooperation, which I would say perhaps small and medium enterprises are also quite interesting, could be also quite interesting for China and definitely for Italy because they create most jobs there. Mm -hmm. Talking about domestic politics, what kind of timetable are we looking at in the next few months, for instance? We know we have the French presidential election coming up in, uh, in April. What about the domestic uh, uh, calendar in Italy? In Italy, we still don't know when the, the next elections will be. There is still a, long, a great debate. The main government party has just split in just past few days. And there is a huge debate about the election, should they be in June, in September or February next year. It's still very massive, but I would say first, yes, look at the French presidential election because they could have an impact in Italy, and then the Germans' elections. Once Germany and the situation there is somehow settled, things could get uh, easier in Italy as well. Mm -hmm. Mr. Wong, you're an expert on Belt and Road Initiative. I think one of the most important things that Chinese people, Chinese government and Chinese enterprises were picking out from what uh, the uh, Italian president has been saying is that they have strong support for the Belt and Road Initiative. How important is Italy for China's Belt and Road uh, uh, Initiative? Well, the historic perspective, as you mentioned, uh, the Rome Empire, mm -hmm. that's a destination of the Asian Silk Road. When talk, people talk about the Silk Road, we remember the, easily that uh, Marco Polo and the Maturusi and all, you know, uh, from Italy, uh, the cultural and the civilization dialogue, and also trade. Today, even uh, Italy also is the second, still second uh, largest, uh, strongest of the industrial power in Europe after Germany. So China and uh, Germany uh, and Italy's corporations, I think uh, uh, along the Belt and Road Initiative uh, has a huge uh, and a new potential. Uh, because Italy is one of the founding nations of the European Union, 
And under the China EU, there are five major platforms like the China EU Mutual Connectivity Platform. And uh, you have to also invest a lot in your young plan to uh, renovate it of your transportation system, uh, single uh, energy market, digital market, and China and Italy can uh, cooperate to guideline of the China EU corporations and high technology, small uh, middle size enterprises, and the design. I think uh, when the Chinese economy structure changed from the export and uh, focus more on the innovation design, I think we have many things to cooperate with Italy. Let me just give a wild guess. Um, in case things go really in the direction that most people fear, that the EU is re the, U the integration of European Union is really in danger, how will that affect China's cooperation with countries like Italy or France, especially in, in projects like the Belt and Road? Would you want to look into the crystal ball? <laughs> what would be the worst case scenario? The worst case scenario would be the fall of Euro and then a, financial, a global financial crisis. And this is, uh, I would say a few years ago, this scenario was very unlikely. Now, I, I wouldn't say it is probable, but it's possible. At least it's possible. This is the worst case scenario. And then if we have a global financial crisis, you know, everything is up in the air. Um, China and every, everybody in the world would be affected. Of course, everybody is also f working against this scenario. But there are some uh, parties, peoples, agency, which think uh, or may think that they have something to gain in this worst case scenario. Mm -hmm. So it is a possibility. Mm -hmm. Mr. Wang? I hope it is not happening <laughs> because right, uh, so the I, EU yeah. studies, if the EU collapse and uh, definitely, uh, you know, what's the other regional integration? They don't have an example in the hope. So we really hope that the uh, European integration will move on to turn over the uh, difficult page, and uh, but as I said, it depends on the European uh, people. So uh, definitely not so pessimistic, but also not so optimistic. Mm. What about, let's talk about one last interesting point, which is design or the textile industry, which is uh, very strong for China and for Italy, of course, but we are probably at this time at a different level on the global value chain. People say made in Italy, they mean better design, higher quality, but when they say made in China, for the moment, still people associated with poorer quality, but a cheaper price. What can these two countries cooperate? What opportunities are there? <laughs> in theory, a lot of opportunity, but uh, uh, there are lots of details that need uh, fine tuning. And I think both countries, we have to think about domestic market and China, especially because it's uh, such a huge potential uh, consumer market, it has to think about ways to develop its internal market in cooperation with foreign countries. By doing it, actually the weight, uh, political weight and economic weight of, uh, of China could increase. Actually one of the importance of America is that it is the largest importing market. So by importing, it can influence a lot of other economies and politics. So maybe China should also think about importing more to, to be more politically influential. Mr. Wang, basically my question is, how can China and Italy connect their national development strategies? I mean, China has the uh, Made in China 2025 and mm -hmm. Italy has Industry 4.0. How do you think they can better connect these uh, development strategies? Even this is the sort of Belt and Road Initiative highlights that the synergy of the strategies right. Uh, you have the reindustrialization. Uh, China also have similar, uh, you know, projects. I think uh, the still some uh, you are middle, you know, higher, and the China in the middle. Some parts of the catch up were still how to uh, complementary uh, space, and also China Italy can jointly to discover the so-called the third uh, market uh, in in Africa, in in, in many uh, other countries. And then this is not just win-win, but it's all win. I think uh, absolutely. That's about uh, road initiative highlight.